Hello friends, this video on mensuration part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's look at a cylinder now. Now cylinder looks more complex than a cuboid or a cube. But when you know about it, you'll see that this is also pretty simple. So how do we find out the total surface area? Now in case of a cylinder, what are the surfaces that we have? We have a circle on the top. We also have a circle at the bottom. And what about the body? we actually have a rectangle. So you remember we had learned about the two dimensional nets which give rise to the three dimensional shape. We learned it in our previous classes. So we see that if you have a sheet of paper in the shape of a rectangle like this, so if you fold this paper from this end such that this end meets this end, what will you get? Just fold it, you will get a cylinder. Right? So basically the body of the cylinder is like a rectangle and the top and the bottom they are circles. So what are the three surfaces which are involved in case of a cylinder? So in case of a cylinder you have two circles. So you have a circle at the top, you have a circle at the bottom and you have a rectangle which forms the body. So that's how a cylinder is formed. Now let us try to find out the area of the circle. So the area of the circle would be pi r square. So let's assume that the radius of the circle is r. Now both these circles are of the same size because if you look at a cylinder, the top and the bottom surfaces, they are of exactly same size. That means the radius of both the circles are the same. So if area of one circle is pi r square, then area of the two circles would be 2 pi r square. Okay, so we found out two, uh, the areas of two surfaces. Now we are left out with the area of the rectangle. So what would be the area of the rectangle? As we know, it is length into breadth. So this is the length of the rectangle and this is the breadth of the rectangle, right? So the breadth, now when you fold this rectangle to form this cylinder what happens this breadth of the rectangle actually becomes the height of the cylinder right so breadth of the rectangle is actually h which is nothing but height of the cylinder what about the length of the rectangle so when you see this length when you fold it to form the cylinder this length becomes the circumference of the circle just visualize it closely if you want you take a sheet of paper which is in the shape of rectangle fold it to form a cylinder and you would see that this length of the rectangle actually forms the circumference of this circle so that means we know that length of a rectangle is equal to length into breadth so what is the length in this case the length is circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r what is breadth in this case it is the height of the cylinder that is h so therefore area of the rectangle is 2 pi r into h now therefore what would be the area of the cylinder so right now when we talk about a i mean we are talking about the surface area of the cylinder we actually mean the total surface area that means top bottom body all the areas are considered so therefore the total surface area of the cylinder will be equal to area of the circles which is 2 pi r square plus area of the rectangular part which is 2 pi r h so this here if you compare these two terms 2 pi r is common here so this would be 2 pi r into r plus h so this is the total surface area of a cylinder so you see it sounded complex but it is pretty simple so total surface area of a cylinder is equal to 2 pi r into r plus h where r is the radius and h is the height of the cylinder. Now till now whatever we were talking about was the total surface area of the cylinder or cube or cuboid. Now let's think of the cylinder in a different way. So think of a, a box which is in the shape of a cylinder with a lead. So the box, the cylindrical box has a lead. So you actually have a circle on the top and a circle at the bottom. What if you remove the lead and you also remove the base of the cylinder? It is still in the shape of a cylinder, but the top is open, the bottom is open. So that means you do not have the top surface, you do not have the bottom surface. So you actually do not have the two circles right now. 
So this time if I ask you what is the surface area of the cylinder? So do you think that it is wise to consider the top and the bottom surfaces also because the, those surfaces are actually not there. So when we are talking about the total surface area of the cylinder that means you have to consider the top and the bottom surfaces also along with the body part. But when we are talking about the curved surface area of a cylinder that time we can exclude the top and the bottom surface. So we are basically talking only about the curved surface area of the cylinder that is only this portion of the cylinder. So that is called the curved surface area of a cylinder. This is also sometimes called the lateral surface area. So lateral surface area and curved surface area are like almost the same thing. So we use curved surface area for a cylinder and we use the term lateral surface area for a cube or cuboid more often. Now how do we find out the curved surface area of a cylinder? Now that's pretty simple. We had calculated the total surface area, right? So the total surface area of a cylinder was 2 pi r into r plus h. This was the total surface area. So in order to find out the curved surface area, what you do is from the total surface area, you just subtract the area of the top and the bottom surfaces. So area of the top surface is pi r squared, area of the bottom surface is also pi r squared. So total it is 2 pi r squared. So you subtract this 2 pi r squared from the total surface area. So then you are left with 2 pi r squared minus 2 pi r h minus 2 pi r squared. Okay, I'm so sorry, this was plus. Yeah, so here 2 pi r square and 2 pi r square will cancel out. So you get 2 pi r h. So that means this is the curved surface area of a cylinder. So a lateral surface area or curved surface area of a cylinder is equal to 2 pi r h. Now, thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.